Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Maybox Linux 21.11 Herbolth. It's the beta version. It's based on Manjaro with the OpenBox desktop. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can become a member right here on eBuzz Central, buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. First thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to the Maybox Linux website, which is mayboxlinux.org. And if you take a look at it, it just basically states it's a fast, lightweight, functional Linux desktop. It's a rolling release. It's Manjaro-based with the OpenBox window manager. It gives you some screenshots up here. You come down a little bit. It tells you it's lightweight. It's fast. It's got fresh software, quick access to the latest packages. Now, Maybox is built on top of Manjaro's stable branch. It's powered by the LTS kernel, and it features a 100% complete and stable OpenBox window manager. So this is going to be running an older kernel than if you downloaded something like an official Manjaro KDE or Manjaro GNOME. This is on a stable branch. Maybox Tools, it's got that, a set of carefully handcrafted utilities and scripts, free, it's developed with passion, you can donate to the development. Latest news, it lets you know that Maybox Linux 21.11 Herbolth is the beta release. This is the one we're getting ready to take a look at it. And then they did have a 21.10 ISO refresh back in October. And then you go up top and you've got home, news, user guide, you've got about, you've got your forum, donate, and then you've got a manual blog, repository. So you get a lot of information right here on their website. So if you do download it, you want to make sure you keep this website in mind because it does have the forum and you can go in and get questions answered pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to close out of the website. If you download Maybox Linux and you put it on a USB or open it up in the virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. As you can see right off the bat, you have two conkeys, one in the upper right, one in the lower left. Now, the one down here in the lower left is kind of a cheat sheet for keyboard shortcuts for everything from file manager, web browser, side panels, left, right, and then windows, close, iconify, maximize. You kind of got your little keyboard shortcut cheat sheet right there. And then in the upper right, it kind of gives you performance of your system. Right now, we've got this system issued two CPUs. It's presently using about 4 or 5% of that. And then down here, pay attention to this. Look at this RAM. I've issued this machine 3 gigabytes of RAM at rest with nothing open. We're at 312 megabytes. That is light, everybody. So if you've got an older machine that you want to bring back to life and make it useful and, more importantly, powerful, this is definitely a distribution to take a look at. And then you come down a little further. It lets you know how long you've been up, what kernel it's running. It's running 5.10.70-1-Manjaro. And then your file system, installed packages, and verification of the stable branch. If you look up top, you kind of have a split-looking panel. On the right-hand side, you've got power, date and time, screenshot tool, Pi radio, internet, battery level, and then desktop 2. You would just click on that, and it switches over to your second desktop. Now, over here to the right of this panel you'll see an arrow. If you click on that, you have a drop-down menu. It gives you settings. First of all, you have the Maybox Control Center. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And when that opens up, you've got everything from system and hardware all the way down to help. Under system, you've got settings, locale settings, language packages, kernel, user accounts, time and date, mouse and keyboard settings, hardware configuration. So if you clicked on locale settings, it will let you know you're in the United States or wherever you might be. It'll let you know your locale. And then language packages, you can adjust those if you want or download them. Kernel, it lets you know that it's the LTS recommended and that's what's running. And then the change log, of course, if you would like to see any changes that have been made to it. User accounts, time and date, mouse and keyboard settings, and then hardware configuration. Now, if you've got an NVIDIA card, this will definitely be the place you want to come. Right now, we're in a virtual machine, so these are listing as virtual. But if you had an NVIDIA card, it would be listed right here. All you would have to do is right-click on it and see where it says install. You would just click install, and it would install your NVIDIA drivers. Once they were installed, you would want to do a restart, and you would be good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then your monitors, XRander, LXRander, and then info. You've got NeoFetch, BTOP. Let's go ahead and hit NeoFetch. And there's your NeoFetch for this operating system. Gives you all the same base information we were getting over here on the Conkey, but that's just a click away, so we will go ahead and close out of that. Then you go to software. 
install popular applications. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, it is populated and it's open right off the bat. It gives you browsers. Just click on browsers and you can go down here and pick any browser you want. It already comes with Firefox. So if you wanted something like Opera or Vivaldi, you could just click on it. Come over here, put a check mark by it. And then you would do the same thing with email. Evolution, Geary, Kmail. Let's say you wanted Evolution, just click on that. And then Office Suites, Free Office, LibreOffice, MS Office Online, Only Office Desktop Editor. Let's do a fresh or still, we'd do a fresh install. We click on that. And then what else do we have? Video and Movie, let's click on that. You've got Cody, Parole, Totem, VLC. You would just go down through here, click all your popular applications. And once those are selected, all you'd have to do is come up here and click Update System. It would download and install those programs as well as the dependencies that go along with them. So we will go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Preferred Applications. Over here, if you downloaded Vivaldi or Opera, you could come over here and select it as opposed to Firefox, and that would be your default. And then your mail reader, once you downloaded a mail program, you could set that up as your primary as well. And then you do have utilities, your main file manager, and then Terminator is your terminal. So let's close out of that. Add and remove software. Those of you that are familiar with Manjaro are familiar with the look of this. First thing you would want to do in here before you did anything is come over here to the hamburger menu, click on preferences, go over to third party. You want to go ahead and enable AUR support, go ahead and enable check for updates, and check for developmental packages. Once that's done, you can go back to general, go down here where it says mirrors. I usually leave this on worldwide because when I do it for a specific locale, it seems to slow my downloads down. So when I do a refresh on this, I'm always going to go worldwide and hit refresh mirrors. That'll take anywhere from two to four minutes. What that does is update all your links for downloads, so that way when you do download apps and software or you do an update on your system, it's quick and you're getting it from the most recent links. So we will go ahead and close out of that. Once you have all that done, you'll be able to go over here and you'll be able to search software just by typing a name up here. Let's say we were looking for something like Mailspring. As you can see right there, it's available in the Arch user repository. You would just click download, it would download, you'd be good to go. That's how you would install software. And then your software update. Auto start will give you the opportunity to select certain items you want to start up on the boot up of your system. If you don't want anything starting, you don't got to worry about it. This is also a place to come look if you do download an app and you find out after it's installed, it's auto starting by itself. You can come over here, remove it from the auto start list, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. Look and feel. You can customize the look and feel. When this opens up, let's just move it over here so we can see. Let's make it bigger so you all can see it. This is your widgets. You can adjust what your widgets look like. If you look, everything changes. The color would change. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on Superdesk because I do like that. But you can go down here and find out what you like down here and apply it. And that way you can customize it to look and feel the way you want it to. And then color. You can adjust your background colors, foreground colors. Icon themes. You can change your icon themes. If you wanted to go with something a little different like Numix or high contrast, you could do that. I'm going to leave it where we're at because I do like the icons. Mouse cursor, you can change those if you want to. I kind of like this one. I like the way it looks. But if you wanted something a little different, you could go with the white version or you could go with the more pointy as opposed to the rounded off version that we're using right now. But I'm going to leave that alone. Window border, you can adjust what your window borders look like. Just come in here, take the time to get it exactly the way you want it to look. Once you got it the way you want it to look, just click apply and you're good to go. Fonts, right now, everything's enabled out of the box. Anti-aliasing, hinting, all that's taken care of, so you don't have anything to change over here. Then you go to other, toolbar style, you can do text only. You could change that to text below icons, text beside icons. I'm going to leave it at text. Just another way that you can customize things right there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Wallpaper. You have two or three different ways to change wallpaper. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because I want to show you. If you come over to the left panel, click the arrow. You can come down here. And there's your wallpaper right there. You can set it up to be a random wallpaper or you can choose a wallpaper. Let's go ahead and choose. And if you notice down here in the lower left, you've got wallpaper that pops up. Now all you got to do is arrow through the wallpapers. Just arrow, find one that you like, and once you find it, let's find a good one. I kind of like that one. 
Let's go with that one. Just hit enter. Now that it's up, hit escape. Your wallpaper is gone. Your choice is set. You're good to go. So let's go ahead and open that back up. To change wallpapers from right here, you just click on wallpaper. Then you could go through and pick the exact wallpaper that you wanted. If you wanted to go with something like that, click on it, apply, and then it changes over. That's a pretty good looking wallpaper. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the one prior to that. I really like the look of that flower. So let's open it up and apply. There you go. Open box configuration manager. Let's open that up. Here you can tweak settings for open box. Let's go ahead and maximize it. Right over here, you've got preset looks. You can scroll down, and if there's a certain look you wanted, just pick it. Once you've got it picked, you could apply it, and you're good to go. And then appearance, windows retain border, animate iconify and restore, active window title. It shows you what font has been chosen, and then the size of that font. So you can come in here, and if you want to change the font, you can do that, and then also adjust the size of it. And then windows, focus new windows when they appear, placing windows, primary monitor, you can make adjustments right there as well. Move and resize, moving and resizing windows. You can come in here and set adjustments for that if you would like to. Your mouse, double click time if you want to speed that up, slow that down, you can do that here. And then focusing windows. You can focus windows when the mouse pointer moves over them. Desktops, you can adjust and give your desktop names if you want to. Right now, we've only have two that are showing up top, but you can set it up to a total of eight just by clicking there and you will see that they list one and two here, and then three through eights over here, and then you can name those desktops. I'm gonna run that back down to two. And then margins, you can adjust your margins on your display. So let's say you've got an older monitor, or you've got an older flat screen TV you're using as monitor, and you've started up, I've had this issue happen in the past, something's wrong with the monitor, and everything just looks too big, and it's off the side of the screen you can come over here and actually adjust this operating system to account for that. And it will move it, adjust it. You can adjust it top and bottom, left and right, and get it to fit. That's perfect. I like that. And then your dock. The dock is a special container of dock apps and dock applications. It is not visible on the screen until a dock app is run. Dock apps can be used to show things like clock or provide you with a system tray. And then you can adjust the position, stacking, and hiding. You can adjust that all over here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. QT5 settings, tint settings, and then notifications. Tint to panel. You can come over here and adjust anything you want to in here. My recommendation is, is out of the box, it's just fine. I wouldn't mess with it if I were you, but that's your choice. If that's something you want to get into, you can. Then you have your conky. Choose conkies, reload conky, edit conky. These are these two over here. These are conkeys. If you wanted to edit these in any way, you could. Menus and panels. Left panel, main menu, right panel. You can come in here and adjust this as well if you choose to. Compositor, themes, and then help. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now we are back on the desktop. If you just right click on the desktop, you can do a live search right here. Let's say you were looking something like a web browser. There you go. You got your WW browser, you got your Maybox forum, and you got Firefox. Or you could say settings. You got your login manager settings, wallpaper settings, pulse audio, Bluetooth. So it brings up everything under settings. So you got kind of a global search just with the right click on the desktop. Then you got your browser, add and remove software, key bindings, screenshot, lock screen, exit, screen notifications, adjusting your screen resolution. When you click on screen resolution, it'll bring up this little box. Go ahead and maximize it. You see where it says VGA1, just right click on it. It'll have active and primary display and then your resolution. You can come over here and pick the resolution that you want to run. I'm presently running correct, so I'm not gonna change it. Once you click it, you go up here and hit the check mark. It'll adjust your resolution and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back right click. You've got terminal. Let's go ahead and open the terminal. Let's see if they have HTOP installed. If they don't, let's try top. And top does open up. Let's go ahead and maximize it. Right now, we have three gigabytes of memory issued to this machine. At rest, with the terminal open, you're using 379 megabytes. I'm telling you, this is an awesome distribution. It's fast, it's light, but it is very powerful. So let's go ahead and close out of the terminal. Right click. You got your file manager. Let's check that out. 
And this looks like PC Man. Let me double check before I put my foot in my mouth. And it is PC Man FM 1.3.2. This is a nice lightweight file manager. Helps you get things done and just pretty much stays out of your way. You've got your usual suspects over here. You got your home folders here. And then your file, edit, view, bookmarks, go, tools, and help. So that is your file manager. Let's go ahead and close out of that. You got add and remove software. We've already looked at Maybox configurations. You can come over here, you can adjust wallpaper, look and feel, menu side panels, and then you've got sub-menus that you get over here. This is insane. Tint to panels, you can come over to tint to panels, CPU, memory, conkeys. You got stomp conky, choose conky, so you got a lot of choices there. Composer, look at all these tools, guys. This is just unreal, the power that you've got with this, and it's all right on the desktop. You don't have to go searching for it. Theme manager, preferred applications, power manager. Open box configuration, and then you come over here, you got accessories, clip it, font viewer, calculator, papyrus folders, graphic user interface, development, you've got Genie, graphics, agave, multimedia, audacious, MPV, pulse audio, internet, Firefox, web browser, QPDF, settings, system, and then your key bindings. If you do want to change the key bindings, you can go in here and change those. And then you've got screenshot, lock screen, and then exit. And then if you come back up to the arrow on the right side, you've got System Update PayMac, PayMac, Renew Keys, Mirror Ranking, Maybox User Guide, Logout, Shutdown, Suspend. Then if you come to the arrow on this side, you've got Main Directory. You've got quick ways to get to your file manager right here. You need to get to Downloads after you download something. Just click on that, come to Downloads, and open it up. Documents, Music, Pictures, Command Palette, Menu Inside Panel Settings. And then you could pick a right panel and things to change. Menu border. Then your wallpaper I just showed you earlier. Random, choose, start a slideshow, system information, screen locker, conky settings, color menu, task manager, weather. If you click on weather, it opens up a nice little terminal weather forecast and lets you know what the weather is. So let's close out of that. And then up here, you've got the main menu. You've got show desktop. You've got your file manager with a click right there. It opens it up. Then you've got Terminal, you got your web browser, and install Maybox Linux. Listen, guys, if you've got an old machine that you need to bring back to life, and not only bring it back to life, but do important work on, Maybox Linux is definitely something to take a look at. But remember, Maybox is not just for older machines. You could put it on a newer machine, and that thing would just fly. Let me know what you think. Is Maybox Linux something you might download, throw in a USB, put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can become a member right here on eBuzz Central, buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.